Thanks for inviting me. Mmm, that looks delicious. I think this might be my favorite tea. Thanks. This is really nice. Great. I don't care what you think of me. I just don't want to lose to you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> what are you staring at me for? I've been doing all my training. Really nice. Captain Gerald made this necklace for me a long time ago. It's a reminder of where I came from. Yeah. Wow, this is great! Thanks for the tea. Invite me by again sometime. Well done. You have my thanks. Impressive. Thanks. Appreciate it. Marianne. Please accept my apologies for my behavior yesterday. I'm not sure what you mean. Asking you about your family like that was pretty insensitive of me. No matter how curious I am, that's no way to treat someone. I'm sorry. Oh, no. You weren't being insensitive. I just didn't want to talk about it. I don't spend much time talking about myself. Not to people, anyway. If not people, then with who? Unpeople? <gasps> Non-people? Well, yes. I'm much more comfortable talking to anyone who isn't a person. I was actually joking, but now I'm mystified. Who is it you like to talk to? Dorte the horse. Ah, of course. Good old Dorte. And does he understand what you tell him? We understand each other. 
He tells me when he's sleepy, or when his stomach hurts, or if his nose itches. Sounds like a complainer, that Dorte. But let's table this fascinating discussion for just a moment. Now that we've gotten in some small talk, I'd like to know what you're hiding. You are hiding something, right? Your lineage, perhaps? Uh, no. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. If it's all just idle gossip, that's fine too. But if it's something silly like, my ancestors were cursed, therefore I'm cursed, you should know that I won't accept that nonsense. That sort of thinking is stupid, and that's all there is to it. Say your ancestors were thieves. Does that make you a thief, even if you've never stolen a thing? Of course not. But people have burdens to bear from the moment they're born. My burdens are so big that I... I'm sorry, I can't discuss this anymore. People certainly are born with burdens. She's right about that. But Marianne, don't you know that you can choose not to carry them? <laughs> Hey there, Cyril. You're working hard as usual. Nah, just doing my job. Rhea herself gives you your daily tasks, doesn't she? The church employs a lot of people, but not too many of them can claim they get to speak with the Archbishop every day. You should be proud of yourself. She clearly values your work ethic. Hey, um, is that everything you wanted to say? Cause I'm kinda busy here. Actually, I was hoping to ask you about Rhea. There's so much we don't know about her, but I thought maybe you... Yeah, I know more about Lady Rhea than anybody. But why should I tell you anything about her? So cold. Think about who you're talking to. Huh? What are you to me? You... don't know who I am? Of Course I do. You're Claude, house leader of the Golden Deer. That's not what I mean. <laughs> well, never mind then. Tell me. Don't you ever miss your homeland? Almira? Yes, Almira. Uh, judging by that expression, I'm guessing you're not terribly homesick. Life was a whole lot harder for me there than it's ever been around here. My dad and mom both died in the war, and there was nobody there to look after me. The king, he didn't do anything to help, so I had to survive by being smart. I had to stop being a kid real quick. I'm sorry to hear that. You don't have to apologize. It's not your fault. Regardless of whose fault it is, I'm still sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't even know that an acquaintance of mine was suffering. And sorry for asking a tactless question about your homeland. I should have known that it was likely to bring back bad memories. Nah, I get sad or mad when I think about it, but I'm used to it, so I don't mind any. I see that. Even still, I apologize for being careless. Okay, well... Thanks, Claude. If the King of Almira was like you, maybe things would have been better. Maybe the King's not a bad person and just had other stuff to worry about. But that's not much of an excuse. <laughs> if I ever meet the King of Almira, I'll give him a stern talking to on your behalf. Yeah, okay. Anyway, I gotta get back to work. Bunch of things to get done. You really are on the other side now, aren't you? Huh. Well, if nothing else, it's good of you to turn a blind eye to me. I don't know what that means, but... Okay, bye, Claude. Hello, Catherine. A moment of your time. Oh, it's you. Yes? That sword you wear upon your hip. How did you come by it, exactly? I don't appreciate your tone. Are you implying I swiped it off someone? Not at all. But heroes' relics are typically passed down through the bloodlines of the Ten Elites. You are descended from a noble family, are you not? That's none of your business. Actually... Let's say I was a nobody, with no relic, no crest. I would still be me, wouldn't I? That's not to say lineage counts for nothing. It just doesn't count as much as how you lived your life and what you live for. Or, let's say I was descended from some noble house. Would that change how you treat me? Yes, it would. To treat you differently from the common folk would only be appropriate. 
You're so narrow-minded, tied down by foolish, antiquated notions. But the nobility and the common folk are different. If the few did not have capabilities to set them apart from the many, then they would not be the few. Wow. You really think nobles are better than everyone else, don't you? I didn't mean to suggest... You pay so much attention to people's lineage and status that you have no idea who they actually are. Even if I was from the prestigious house whatever, I would never associate with a blowhard like you. Turn them at some point. Ah! What's going on? Everything okay? Ugh, just my luck. Lysithia? Oh, wow. Look at the mess you made. Thank you for the assistance. I can take it from here. Were you planning on carrying this much weight on your own? Don't be ridiculous. You should have at least asked for help. They're all books I need for my studies, and it's my own responsibility. No need to involve others. I'm happy to help you carry some of them. How about Ap? That's fair, right? No, really, I have this. I am not incapable, and I'm not a child. <laughs> as smart as you are, you sure are a silly person. I'm so tough. I'm gonna stand my ground. I don't need help from anyone. And when things don't go my way, I'm gonna act all sad and moody. You are remarkably talented at channeling me. Huh? Oh, no. Sorry. I was imitating my little sister. Her name's Maya. She's way smart, but she can be pretty stubborn. You remind me of her. W what I mean to say is that I want to help. So swallow your pride and ask. <sighs> I'll be carrying the stack of books now. Got a problem with that? Yeah, yeah. You seem obstinately determined to go against my wishes. All right. Is this a good spot to drop them? Hey, what are you doing? They need to be stacked neatly, otherwise they'll topple. This one needs to be rearranged, otherwise the rest won't fit properly. <laughs> wow, talk about picky. You're the one who was so insistent on helping. If you're gonna help, do it right, or don't bother. Fine, fine. Is that... Raphael? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I get it. But you can't be so picky. You need some meat in your diet. I don't know if you can eat human food, but bug meat might be good for you. That's right. You need to eat plenty of bug meat if you want to get big and strong like me. No more sweets for you. What? He's talking to a bird? Huh? Is someone there? Um... Oh, Marianne! You're right on time. This little birdie was telling me that he misses you. And, uh, oh ho! Aw. Oh. It flew off. It appears so. Why do you think birds fly away when there's more than one person around? Birds never seem to stay put, unless I'm alone. Birds are very cautious creatures. They tend to fly away when they're startled. You mean they're afraid of loud noises? Oops, <laughs> that was probably too loud for the birds. Come on, Raphael. Keep it down. How's this? Do you think we'd be able to talk to birds together like this? I still haven't met a bird that can speak human. I was hoping you could introduce me. Huh? I thought you were just talking to one. I was mostly talking at him, not to him. He just said chirp chirp and stuff like that. Uh, I had no idea what he was talking about. I don't think he understood me either. <sighs> Marianne, you always know which birds understand what you're saying, right? Next time you find a bird who understands you, I hope you let me know so I can join the conversation. Now what?
What am I supposed to do? play. That's it. Promise. I'm not going to make you perform in front of everyone else. I just wanted to hear you myself. J just you? Nobody else? Really? Really. I kept trying to ask, but you always ran away. That doesn't mean you can just watch me creepily from the shadows, you know. That would scare anyone. You're right. I'm sorry. I just didn't know how else to get your attention. You get so scared. But it looks like I end up scaring you anyway. I'll leave you alone, Bernadetta. I really just wish I could have heard you play. Raphael? Oh, hey, it's you. Going for a walk again today? No, I'm on cooking duty today. And I have to head into town for some groceries. All on your own? Hmm, I'd better go with you. I'd be worried if you went by yourself. No, please. I can manage on my own. But won't you have a hard time carrying everything back? Not at all. I'll be fine. I'm just replacing a few ingredients. Also, I may not look it, but I'm actually quite strong. I've been exercising every day. You're right. You don't look it. Your biceps are a fraction of the size of Raphael's. If you start fumbling around under the weight of all the groceries, and then you trip and spill everything everywhere... Look, I'm just saying that could be your future. It could happen. It doesn't look pretty. That's what you think of me, huh? Yep. You're honestly a bit of a mess. I see. If that's how you feel. Knock it off with the wounded puppy dog eyes. As though I'm some sort of villain in your story. I'm sorry. That wasn't my intention. I'm just a bit sensitive, that's all. You're talking like you don't respect me. I see. So now it's my fault? No matter how grown you seem to think you are, there's so much you're incapable of. You can play at being a mature adult, but it only ever complicates things, and that's exactly what makes you look like a child. Uh, oh, enough already! Would you just leave me alone? Maybe I... went a bit far that time. But he's so stubborn despite his ineptitude, I can't just leave it be. He's so foolish, constantly making a mess of things. Wait, but then... No matter how much we stretch, some things are always beyond us. I think it's fine to be vulnerable and ask for help sometimes. What he said to me before... To everyone else, do I seem just like Ignatz? <laughs> Ignatz, why are you following me? Oh, I... can I help you with something? You must be struggling by yourself, Cyril. This is my job. I do it myself. Well, we could do it so much faster working together. You don't have to. I don't mind. Plus, if we finish early, you can go and do whatever you like. You want to know what I want to do? Sure, tell me. 
I'd like to do my assigned work without you pestering me. Oh. Okay. Why are you always so concerned about what I'm doing anyway, Ignatz? It's kind of weird, you know? Wow. It hurts when you put it like that. I've been meaning to ask you about Almira. You always look so busy, but I thought you might talk to me if I helped with your work. There's nothing about Almira worth talking about. But I find it all so fascinating. Please, tell me about the people, the buildings, the flowers. Ooh, any scenery you liked looking at. Nope, never took much time to look at anything. Why do I gotta talk about stuff I don't want to talk about just because you're bored, Ignatz? Even though you endured hardships, there must have been some things you enjoyed. You don't get it. Look, I'm gonna go. Should have done it already. Okay, sorry to bother you. Let me know if I can help. Oh, and I hope we can talk some other time. But there's nothing to talk about. Jeez, what a weirdo. Ah, found you! Hello, Lysithia. Uh, Hilda? What's that box you're holding? It's making me nervous for some reason. <laughs> Your big sister Hilda's here, and she's going to make you look all grown up. I, uh, don't recall ever asking you to... That's right, I knew exactly what you needed. You didn't have to ask. Now take a seat. With makeup, you can't just pick your favorite colors. You must choose colors that suit you and the occasion. If you'll be up close and personal, if you're going to a ball, for example, you want to keep it subtle. On the other hand, if you're going to be on stage, the colors should be overt. Uh, I've never used makeup before. It sounds complicated. Let's put up your hair to show off your neck. But we'll leave a few strands hanging to make you look more vulnerable. Why would I want to appear vulnerable? I don't want to be attacked. <laughs> this is for wooing, not warring. When you're older, you might understand the importance of looking a little vulnerable. Ugh, you're treating me like a child. But I guess it's mostly harmless. Now, when you're standing, put your non-dominant foot a step back. It looks more elegant. When sitting, don't lean back, but don't slouch either. And ensure at all times you're gracefully extending your fingers. Gracefully? Extending? Ugh. Suddenly standing and sitting are an exhausting activity. Hilda, that's enough. This is wearing me out. I knew you had potential. You'll go far, my darling. A couple of years to develop your charms, and no girl will outmatch you. I'm not sure I'm cut out for this type of thing. Oh, believe me, you are. With a little help from me, you'll have men falling at your feet. No thanks. You're more suited to such things. I'll leave it to you. I haven't the time or the energy to fuss over how I'm perceived. Even with my best efforts, I'll never be as good at this as you are. Still... This was rather fun. Thank you, Hilda. She really is brimming with untapped potential. When she smiles like that, wow, even my heart skips a beat. <laughs> Lysithia, I have to say, you're really impressive. I respect you a lot, and I thought I should tell you. Uh, okay? It's just, you know, you're four years younger than me, but you work really hard at everything. I mean, when I was your age, I wasted all my time just goofing off and doing whatever I wanted. Doesn't look like much has changed for you since then. And unlike you, I don't have time to waste, so leave me be. Are you going to do some extra magic training? I'd be happy to join you, if you don't mind. What do you want to start with? I am absolutely disinterested in spending any time with you. What is it you want anyway? Clearly, you haven't been listening to a word I've been saying.
Perhaps it's because I'm younger. You see fit to ignore me when I speak. Is that it? What? No. Age has nothing to do with it. You're amazing. You're true to yourself. You know what you want and who you are. Not a lot of girls I know can say that. Ah, so it isn't my age that's to blame for you breezing over my wishes. It's my gender. I... what? Where did you get that idea? I'm just trying to praise your smarts and hard work and everything. It's impressive how someone so young... Your lack of self-awareness is deeply troubling. What I'm aware of is you trying to pick a fight. Calm down, kiddo. Look, I'm really busy. Super, extremely, inordinately busy. I've got one last thing to say to you. And what would that be? I'm skilled with magic, and my abilities are finely honed. It's not like I need someone for target practice. No, but I do. Hmm, this one ought to do. Uh, what are you doing, Ciro? I'm picking out logs to carry back and chop into firewood. You can't expect to carry all these by yourself. Let me help. No, I got it. I don't want you getting hurt. Logs are heavy sometimes. I'm well aware. You should accept the help being offered. I'm older and wiser. I know best. Um, Lysithia, you seem a bit shaky. You okay? Yep, totally fine. I'm just kind of losing my grip on this log. Duh! Well, that wasn't much help as it turned out. I didn't realize they'd be that heavy. I couldn't even walk in a straight line. I told you, logs are heavy sometimes. It's hard work if you're not used to it. I feel foolish. Well, if you've learned your lesson, I'm gonna go carry the other locks. Hang on. Shouldn't you rest for a bit? Wood still needs chopping. I got a bunch of other stuff needs doing before sundown, too. In that case, let me help you carry the chopped wood. You know how rough firewood is? You'll get splinters if you carry it with your soft hands. <sighs> you can't be serious. You're just not cut out for this kind of work. Look at your hands. They're like a princess's. No point in you learning to chop wood, is there? You don't need to know how to do that stuff. You and me live in different worlds. There's no point lowering yourself down into mine. Our worlds aren't so different. We're together right now, aren't we? Sure, we live in the same places now, but that's not gonna last forever. Don't see how it could. Unless I actually turned into your little brother or something. <laughs> greenhouse duty was mine today what are you doing here oh I <sighs> I'm sorry you've been avoiding me ever since I lost my temper haven't you you're probably scared of me now in the moment I was hurt I'm sure you had good reasons to act the way you did if you want me to leave you alone I will I promise you've got nothing to fear from me Leone I I've watered all the plants, so I'm done here. I'll get out of your way. Uh, wait! Huh? Hey, what is it? It's... um... I don't mean to bother you. I'm sorry for keeping you here. <laughs> no, not at all. Thanks for keeping me. Honestly, I've been worried about you. If you ever want to talk about anything, just say so. I'll make time. I've been avoiding people for most of my life, so I'm not the best at speaking. I know it's hard. You've been through a lot. But it's worth the extra effort to talk to your friends. I make everyone uncomfortable. I just don't know how to carry on a conversation. Hey, we're having one right now. And I'm telling you, I'm not uncomfortable. I'm actually really happy. So don't worry about me. And it's okay to be quiet sometimes, but... Try to find a middle ground, at least. 
Otherwise, you'll never get any better. Oh. As far as what to talk about, anything's good. Hobbies, things you like, a dream you had last night. Really, anything. Okay, then. I, um... I like this flower. I think it's nice. I think so, too. Did you know that where I come from, those have a completely different color? Oh, really? I'd like to see that. Great. Come visit my village someday. In fact, we should invite all of our friends. It'll be fun. Oh, yes. That would be very exciting. <laughs> Hey, Hilda. You said you wanted to talk? Oh, what's with all these expensive necklaces? Why do you have them all laid out like that? Pretty, right? I'll let you choose whichever you like. Huh? Why would you do that? Just choose. I want you to have one. I'm not going to accept a gift like that without a reason. Even with a reason, I'd probably decline. Look how gorgeous they are, though. Wearing beautiful things gives you energy. Maybe for you. Yes, for me. Why would it be any different for you? Because to me, those are just fancy decorations. Take this one, for example. How did you come by it? This was the first necklace I picked out for myself. It doesn't suit my style nowadays, so I don't often wear it. That's the kind of thing I'm talking about. The sentimental value of each one. These necklaces are nice and all, but I don't have any special feelings or memories about any of them. But this charm, it's packed with things I don't want to forget. Captain Gerald's teachings and a lot of memories, too. Even if, to you, it's just a dirty hunk of wood. Hmm, I do understand. But still, you're not going to be very popular with the boys if you keep wearing that dirty old thing. <laughs> like I care about that. You can drop the whole stony face to act. Come on, I'm offering to help you here. I could even make a charm for you as a gift, if you're really hung up on sentimental value. Make a charm for me? You do that? Sure, why not? I don't want you to be alone your whole life. Besides, this happens to be a talent of mine. It'll be really, really cute, so you'd better wear it. Sure. I can't just accept a gift for nothing, though. I'll make one for you, too, if you'll teach me how. And I'll put plenty of feeling into it, so when we exchange them, it will really mean something. Oh, that sounds lovely. I'll gladly teach you how, but make me something cute, okay? I'll see what I can do. Hey there, Hilda. You're looking cute today. Thanks. You're looking quite handsome yourself. You know exactly how to talk to a guy. I like it. What's with all the books? Oh, these? I was just bringing them to... Uh, ouch! Ouch! What's wrong? Did you hurt your foot? Uh, yeah, I tripped earlier. But I'm supposed to return these books to the library by the end of the day. Relax. I'm sure there's a handsome guy around here who knows how to carry books to the library. You rest your foot. I'll take care of this. Oh, no, that's all right. You must have something more important to do. Nothing is more important than helping you. Just pile the books on that desk, and I'll get them where they're going. Oh, you're so kind. Thank you so, so much. It's nothing. I'm happy to... Wow. That is a lot of books. I'll just leave them right here for you. Thanks again, Sylvain. You're the best. Wait a minute. Some of these books have dust on them. She's been holding on to these for months. The professor was looking for this one a few weeks ago. Hilda, hang on. Did she just trick me into doing something she didn't want to do? <sighs> <sighs> uh, 
That's enough. You're done for today. <sighs> right. Thanks. Are you feeling pain anywhere, Leone? No. Sorry, I'm all right. Why are you apologizing? Because I can't hold my own against you. And on top of that, you have to worry about hurting me. I feel like I've let you down. Do you know what I meant when I said, you're done for today? Probably that I was about to keel over. No, it wasn't about your physical strength. I could tell that you didn't have the will to keep fighting. I've got plenty of will. No matter what I do, I can't win. Isn't that what you were thinking? If you think you can't win, you won't. <sighs> Perhaps you already knew that. Good point. But never assume that you'll win. That is, don't underestimate your foe. At all times, you have to keep a clear head to make split-second decisions. In battle, mistakes are deadly. But I don't have a crest or a relic. How could I ever hope to beat you? If you put it like that, I'll fight barehanded, and I won't use my crest. Think you can win? Do your worst. Oh dear, I might have overdone it there. But I believe in her. I would be doing her a disservice if I pulled any punches. It's Leone after all. She'll be back on her feet and charging at me before I know it. Did you need something? This tea is my favorite. How did you know? My thanks. Bitter, is it not? Yes. 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 Was there something you wanted to discuss? <laughs> Does my face unsettle you? I have heard it before. Just the right amount of heat. Why are you staring? It was delicious. I hope you will invite me again. Thank you. 